In this video, we're going to be talking about bank deposits in QuickBooks Online. The reason that they're important to be putting into QuickBooks Online is mainly for bank reconciliation purposes. So whenever you're looking at your bank feed, you will see those deposits um, incoming into your bank. And if you have cash transactions, checks, things like that, and if you're recording those sales as cash and checks going straight into your bank account, and it's going to be show up in your QuickBooks Online all individually. So you'll see a, maybe a cash, de cash deposit of $100, check deposit of $100. When in reality, if you keep those during the day, so let's say you have the cash on hand of $100 and the check of $100, and at the end of the day, you bring those to your bank, you want to your QuickBooks Online to show a deposit of $200 for that day, not a deposit of individual $100 deposits. Because whenever you go to match your bank feed and reconcile in your bookkeeping file, it's not going to match. So that's why it's so important to use the bank deposit feature. And I'm going to show you how to do that, whether you're sending invoices and receiving payments off of those invoices, or if, or if you're doing some sort of daily sales um, recurring transaction, whether you have an external POS system that's integrated, or if you're manually putting in daily sales into your QuickBooks Online. Um, so just really quickly, let's say at first, so let's say we are doing this daily sales um, thing. So how that would generally look. So if you're doing a sales receipt and again, whether you're doing this manually or if it's, um, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but just so you understand what's happening. So say we have a daily sales generally. So. See about a thousand dollars in sales. Generally, what usually happens is you'll have the sales as a positive, and then you'll have clearing accounts for the actual um, type of sales that were, whether it was credit card, cash, or check, as negatives. And I'm not going to go into too much of this detail of what I'm actually in this video of what I'm actually doing here, but just so you have an idea, this is what you're doing, how the bank deposit feature will work. Now you'll see the transaction here. So. Ultimately what's happening is there's clearing accounts associated with this. So you want to worry about the credit cards. That'll be on its own thing. Um, these cash sales will be into a clearing account of cash on hand um, that we already have set up and created. And then these check accounts will be in a clearing account of undeposited funds. So what happened here is we did our daily sales. We have $200 cash in our hands and we have two checks, one for $100, one for $300 also in our hands. And we're going to take these uh, to the bank at the end of the day and we're going to give them these two checks as well as the cash in order to uh, deposit it into our account. And now we want to put this in the QuickBooks Online so that it knows that it's a total of a $600 deposit, not a $200 deposit, a $100 deposit, and $300 deposit because again, that's not going to be how it shows up on your uh, actual bank feed. So we can go ahead and save and close this. So now that we have that daily transaction, the sales transaction in the QuickBooks Online, we have the cash and the checks. We brought it to the bank and deposited it. Now we need to put that deposit into QuickBooks Online. So in order to do that, in the top left corner here, you'll see this plus new. You can click on that. And then under other, you'll see the option for bank deposit. Again, you can click on that. Now make sure to choose the correct bank here and the correct date. And then um, you'll see these payments included in the deposit that you can choose here. And these are what came from that uh, those daily sales entries that we're putting in. So you can use a combination of both here. So you can choose any payments that you see. And then if you're if they don't if you don't see them here and need to add some, then you can add them down here in the bottom in order to finish out that deposit. So again, for this particular case, we're adding in those two checks of so the check one, two, three, and check five, two, four. And we see those here in the correct amount. So we can just click on each one here. And then you'll see that we have $400 so far um, for the two checks. So now all that we need is that extra $200 cash that we're bringing also to the bank. And so that's this isn't the correct option here. So we can go ahead and add it down here to this deposit. The Again, the $200 check. So you can see it from probably have some sort of daily sales customer set up if we're doing it this way. Um, that clearing account, which is going to be cash on hand. Um, we can choose that down there right here for cash in the amount of $200. Now that we'll see that we have a total of $600 that we're bringing to the bank, $200 in cash, and then six, four, I'm sorry, $400 in the two checks that we have. Um, if you don't see, again, if you don't see anything here, any checks or anything, we can do the same thing for the checks. If you have any extra checks here, we can do daily sales. 
for the checks, it would be in the clearing account undeposited funds. And then we can do check in the amount. That's just so you see it. We're not doing it here, but, and then we can go ahead and save and close this and we'll see that we have a deposit of $600. Now, if you're not doing the daily sales, um, if you're doing more of invoicing and receiving payments that way, same procedure um, to an extent. So I'll show you how to do that now. So let's say for example, we have an invoice to a customer. So let's say we recorded a sale here and received it with check. Check five, 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 and checks go into undeposited funds. So we made a sale and we received a check of $500. What we don't want to do when we're doing that is deposit it straight into the bank. And the reason for that is if we, again, if we bring multiple checks to the bank, it's going to um, basically merge all those together and consolidate them into one big deposit. So that'll mess up your reconciliation. So you definitely want to make sure that they're being deposited into this a clearing account here. So we can save in new. So let's say we had one sale the day where we received the check. And then we had another sale during the day where we received uh, cash. So we can do that here, payment method cash. And for cash, the clearing account happens to be set up to be cash on hand. So we received $200 cash in this sale. So we can go ahead and save and close that. So again, after those two sales in the day, we have a $500 check as well as a $200 in cash. And now at the end of the day, we're gonna bring that to the bank to deposit it. So again, top left feature or top left corner here, hit new under other bank deposit. Correct the right associate or choose the correct uh, associated bank as well as the date. And then, so here again, we see this check here and in the in, uh, payments included in this deposit, the correct check for $500 that we were bringing to the bank. So we can choose that. And now we just have that extra $200 in cash and we can add that to the deposits here. So the cash was from Walter White. Again, that clearing account is the cash on hand. So we can choose that payment method cash for $200. And that'll give us that total deposit of $700 that we had in sales that day. So we can go ahead and save and close that. So now what you'll see, if you go into your bank register here, you can go to your chart of accounts and look at the Chase Bank register. We'll see two deposits that we made. We made one for $600 as well as one for $700. So whenever you go to match everything to your bank feed, as well as do your reconciliation at the end of the month, it, everything will be clean and you'll be able to match up those deposits with your actual bank feed rather than trying to do everything individually because it won't work within QuickBooks Online. So that's a video on um, bank deposits. I'd like to make some to get more into detail of what I showed you with the daily sales and how to set all those up and everything. So in the clearing accounts, I'll do that later on. But um, as always, thank you for watching. And if you need uh, any more support, maybe some one-on-one -on -one stuff or have just a quick question for me, you can always let me know in the comments below or send me an email. Thank you.